Hi, I'm Eric Knowles, president of the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce, and this is our member connection. But before we get started, a word from one of our supporters. This is garbage, and you probably think all of it just goes to waste. But in Miami-Dade, we convert most of what you throw away into energy. In our waste to energy facility, we can turn about 90% of your everyday garbage into reusable fuel that creates clean electricity for our community. Enough energy to power 35,000 homes. Pretty illuminating, huh? In Miami-Dade, nothing goes to waste. And welcome back to the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce's Member Connection. Eric Knowles, president of the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce, and I'm excited. You know, I say it all the time, but when you have guests and members of the chamber that are doing the thing that they're doing, you know, it's always exciting. And and none other than Kellen Cachet Coleman is with us today, the founder of uh, Coleman PR and consulting firm. How you doing, my brother? I'm good. Blessed by the best. How you doing, brother? Hey, man. You know, living my best life, as I say. Awesome. You awesome. Know? And it's it's great to have you here. You know, we've um, had many conversations uh, via Zoom on our member meetups on Tuesday. And you're always there. Um, and, you know, it's exciting to hear you speak about the things that you're doing. Tell us a little about your consulting and PR firm. Coleman Public Relations and Consulting Firm, the service is in the name. We're just here to solve problems. Sometimes they're in person, sometimes they're online, and now they're going into, you know, this whole metaverse talk, uh, you know, buzzwords, and we're just trying to learn and make sure that our clients can make that shift if if they choose. So when you say your client's making that shift, Mm -hmm. what does that mean? Well, to me, the metaverse is just, you know, online at your own portal. So to, to me, Facebook, YouTube, even MySpace back in the day, for those who can remember, you're in your own world. You almost get to become whoever you want. You know, you could work um, or you could not work, but online you could look like a millionaire. So for us, for all of our clients, we basically want to make you an influencer because that's something we can monetize, whether it be on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, even if you're a plumber. We've seen plumbers, exterminators get TV shows, you know, and so we just want to monetize everything because whatever you put your time into doing every day, you should be able to make some money for the kids, leave your grandkids something and just, you know, it's a legacy that you want to leave behind. Okay. We're talking about influencers and and I know we, not everybody, but a lot of folks are on Instagram, TikTok, and, you know, TikTok, everybody's saying TikTok is the way to go. Um, They say Facebook is passe. Um, influencers mm-hmm. and you know you see these folks on online with a million followers 30,000 followers 100,000 followers so those are your influencers those are you know influencers that are known but you don't have to be known to be everybody to be an influencer okay. to me everybody you have made your influence okay. so if you start and dedicate yourself to youtube and give that wisdom that you've learned it could help so many other i'm, I'm selling you right now no no yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> no i'm listening yeah. because that's i've never heard it put in that way because and i'm sure most folks haven't heard it put in that way mm-hmm. because you think of those folks who are you know i can say fifty thousand followers followers, Mm -hmm. um, so on and so forth. Those are the influencers. But as you say, you don't have go into that a little bit more. Well, because um, and people like Seth Godwin have written books about it. He's written over 200 books, Tribes, Purple Cow. You don't have to have a million followers to make a million dollars. What you have to do, and he references the Grateful Dead, you need to have a following that will follow you wherever you go. So I have a podcast, Diversified Game. People say, wait, you're a top 2% podcast, but on YouTube, it's not a big number. It's okay. I interview a millionaire at least every week, if not two or three. And those people are in my circle and their publicists keep sending me, you know, good stories. So I'm doing something right. And just because you can't monetize what I'm doing or you can't see the monetization on YouTube doesn't mean that there's not business being done. So let's say my podcast makes no money, which it does make, you know, a couple pennies. 
I can still take my guests and turn them into clients. So I'm really interviewing potential clients with Diversified Game. And that's something that everybody could do, whether you, again, you're a plumber, carpenter, consultant, or, you know, lawyer, you can have a show where you talk about your clients' issues right there where you can control it and you get to put out into the universe what you want to put out. Okay. And how, do, again, for the audience, you know, I've, again, I've, I've heard about influencers. I know folks, they make money. Mm -hmm. How does that, actual how does that um transaction happen well a lot of people are using you know google will pay you um TikTok, uh instagram they'll pay you because they have the ad dollars they have the whole system which you could create your own but you're probably going to have to go get one your own site you might need your own server and you're going to have to go find the ad so they kind of make it easier for you but in the words of little richard sometimes they're only paying you half a penny you know, so if you really want to maximize the money, you then go make a course. Maybe you we've just took 30 people to South Africa with one of my clients using his audience. And we've done the same thing in Kenya before. And we plan to keep on doing that to show Americans and Europeans, especially black ones, that Africa isn't what they showed you on TV, which you you definitely know that. Right. Um, I had the pleasure of, of going over to Africa um, a few years ago, I had the opportunity to go to uh, Nigeria, uh, I landed in Abuja and then actually had an audience with the king in Benin City. And that was one one I want to say hell of experience. It was a hell of experience yeah. <laughs> um, to, to be able to do that. What really excited me when I went was the fact that we actually drove uh, from Abuja to Benin City. And it was like an eight hour drive and, and driving through the various villages and seeing folks, um, <laughs> seeing bush meat hanging, <laughs> hanging, hanging on, the, you know, the side of the road and all the vegetables being the real markets, the original markets. Mm -hmm. um, so I know you just came from Africa mm -hmm. and you're quite engaged. You've done quite a few things. I mean, uh, besides being, you know, this PR mogul, uh, you've written a few books um, and you do engage in Africa quite a bit, quite a bit. Can you talk about that a little yeah, Africa is my happy place. Pick 54 countries. I'm happy when I'm there. Um, I, I grew up with Africans. I grew up with everybody, really, you know, even from South America. And so when I leave the country, it's something of the stress comes off and you're you don't have to worry. You know, we don't have to worry as Americans usually about the racism wherever we go, because we're just Americans where we could be in Sweden, Switzerland, we're just Americans and people are welcoming to Americans at this time. So when I go to Africa, I'm always looking for business. I'm always, you know, half the time I have my family with me, even if I'm going for business this time, my family came to meet me after work. And that was the best experience because my wife is like, we could be here. I could be here and be comfortable and try this out. And I said, well, it's, it's nothing but travel. And I think travel is the better is the best teacher. Um, I, I love school once I got to college, but I learned so much more in travel. And I think so many travelers, you just learn how the world is and how we're all similar, if not the same. Right. And the one thing great, I guess, if we say um, something great out came out of the pandemic is the fact that we all pivoted and we realized that we didn't have to be in one place. Mm -hmm. And so when you talk about travel and, the, and in particular, the type of business that you do, you can pretty much be anywhere around the world yeah. and do what you do. Yes, sir. So talk about that a little bit. That was the dream at 12 when I wrote the vision down. I wrote what I'm doing now at 12. And when I met my wife um, at around 2021, 20, we, what we're living now is what we planned about 20 years ago. And the travel and just being able to open shop and close it when you want, hang out with your kids when you want and give them that time because tomorrow's not promised. The next second's not promised. So I have to be stingy sometimes with my time and who I dedicate it with. And even with clients, I say no more than I say yes, because there's certain things that I want to accomplish while I'm here. So while God's giving me the time, I can't say yes to that because it's not even about the money at this point. It's about the purpose. All right. No, that's a good point you make. A lot, a lot of times, it, it's it's hard for people to say no because they want to be um, accepted, I guess, or whatever it is. And you do have to say no in order to keep moving forward. Um, reading in, in your bio, you wrote a book uh, about 2014 about um, let's say a quick guide to Christian music. 
Talk about that a little bit. Uh, so that book, uh, out of the heart, one of the hardest times in my life, I got into the Christian industry only to find out that some of my folks from the secular <laughs> were they are making the same moves. And you say, I want to help these artists, but at the same time, I want to be able to fulfill a purpose. And so in that book, I laid out how you can get on TV, radio, magazines, what the best conferences are for the Christian entertainers, artists, ministers, however they want to be labeled. Because some people don't like that label. I'm a minister. I'm not, you know, but you're an actor, too. So I, I, I laid it out. It's the only book of its kind still that is giving you over, you know, it's over a hundred easy direct media contacts where you can see them, you can contact the organizations, not the people, because they'd be mad at me if I put their personal stuff right, out there. Right, right. But um, I wanted to lay something out because I knew growing up in the church and what I saw as an adult now, I wasn't going to be able to just dedicate all my time there and really fulfill my purpose. It was, it's just a lot of, you know, we're people, so we're all flawed. But I wanted to lay a, a, a outline out for that 14 year old who doesn't have thousands of dollars to pay a publicist, a consultant, even an engineer, and he can or she can take it and progress. OK, so speaking about publicists and for those folks who don't know what a publicist does, explain that. So uh, a PR professional, <laughs> all they do, we're, we're, you know, getting you to the newspapers, the magazines, the radio stations. A good one is a real teacher. And that's where I transformed about five years ago, maybe six. And I had people say, you're not a publicist anymore. You're a consultant. You're in your client's business. You're a business manager. You're making deals and you're, you're creating stuff and, and you need to get paid for that. So what I tell people is we start consulting first, then we'll let you know if you need PR. Because a lot of folks, you talk to a publicist who's seasoned, they're going to tell you, hey, give me $5,000 a month or, you know, send me over your pictures or blah, blah, blah. But one one, every small business or person can't afford that amount right. of money. Um, two, so you can be on Oprah, Forbes, and every other show that you can think of. But if your system isn't right, and I, you get famous or popular, but the system, you can't deliver the really, product. Exactly. It, it doesn't make sense. So I tell people, we're going to first consult with you, and then we'll move into the PR because it gets expensive. I mean, people are spending $60,000 a month in ad spend and more you know, just to be at number one in, in their game online, whether it's Instagram, Google, you know, you name it. Okay. When you're saying they're spending 60,000 in ad spend, mm -hmm. explain that one. So there to <laughs> internet is fake. Okay. You know, internet is, if you're shocking, if you're willing to spend the money, you know, you say Facebook is old, but Facebook and Instagram, you know, being tied in. Well, that's what they say. I don't yeah, say yeah, it. Yeah. That's what they say. Yeah. I mean, th th what they're saying is my grandmother's on Facebook, so it's yeah. not cool anymore yeah, 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 yeah. As, it, as it once was like a TikTok. You know, grandma probably isn't on TikTok right. yet. But to spend 60000 on that ad spend of paying a Facebook, paying a YouTube, just to be higher in the algorithm. People pay for followers. People pay for views. That's why you can't, you know, you'll be down in the dumps if you think, I have better content than them, but they're not, no one's hitting my stuff like that. It's, they might be spending ads. They might be using all type of software to push them up in an algorithm or paying somebody. And if you're willing to do that, great. But you need a genuine, organic audience to buy into you. And how do you get a, 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 a organic audience? Every Every client is different because some people just have it. They have that it factor. When they open their mouth, you know, okay, people are going to listen. Or you look at them and you're like, this is the most beautiful person in the world. Everyone's going to follow this person. You know, it's like that Halle Berry effect back in the day. You put her in a movie, you know, somebody's going to watch it. And she's a good actress. Right. But that visual for a lot of people are Denzel for the ladies, right? You, you put them in a movie, it's going to win. So how do you get it is you keep working. You don't get it overnight. If anyone tells you I can make you famous tomorrow and they don't own you the can't network. can't do that? Huh? Well, we can. <laughs> we can. And what I'll tell you is let's go to the Capitol. You're going to have a firearm. You're going to shoot up in the air. And then when they say, hey, what, why'd you do it? Hey, track number seven or go to my website and download my explanation. <laughs> <laughs> We're going back to the whole thing of this here we are, 2022, 
the metaverse. Mm-hmm. Now, all of a sudden, you know, we we're, we're dealing with the metaverse. Yeah. And and I hear people are spending sixty, seventy thousand dollars to build out their metaverse. Talk what's your spin on the metaverse? So I like the real world and life is beautiful and it's just it's blessed. But there are people who for decades now who have been, whether it's Sims, building up communities. You know, again, I said Facebook, MySpace, you are building up your community. How hard is it to say now I want to buy a house in the Facebook world? So if that's you and you want to live in some alternate reality, right, and you can make a lot of money doing that and you can talk to people, you can be somebody, you know, you can be a doctor in the metaverse, but you never went to school. But put a turban on with a, a crystal ball and say, I'm a doctor of whatever, you know, I, I, I know we can't stop it, but it's the twilight zone we're living in, you know, and I'm talking about the black and white episodes. <laughs> that's, 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 we, we're living in that. And there's some people who their lives are just they're not as great. And there's also some entertainers who say, hold on, if I go into this, everybody will follow me and they'll buy a house around me. And, you know, my property value will go up so they can make some money. And, and this this money is real. Well, it's crypto mostly, but but, but it's real. It's, it's real money. It's right. real money. I mean, somehow, whether you mine for crypto or whether you, you know, you, you bought it or whatever you invested in, trade it. It's it's real deal world for some people. But I mean, the geeks and the nerds are going to win first and then everyone else is going to follow and say, oh, I need a bigger mansion. But um, it's something that every business you can get in right now for a low amount. You just have to figure out which universe Which a metaverse niche. you want to be in yeah. right right it's <laughs> crazy 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 so what's the future the future man if i knew that i'd have my crystal ball and my <laughs> turban on there i hope that you know we all have good health that we can keep our mask off that this pandemic globally we will end because what impacts one place we see impacts the whole world and that i want everybody to get online no matter what you do you have a book in you you know Many of great people have said you at least have one book, write the book. You don't know if it'll turn into a movie, but what else it will inspire to help somebody else? Because if we're not helping somebody else, what are we really doing? Exactly. So you speak about, as you say, um, they say we as individuals at least have one book in us Mm -hmm. or, or, or a movie. How would you help a person that has that one book in them or that movie in them? So we would have a... We can have a quick conversation for free 99 or they can say, you know what, I'm all in and this is what I have. And I need an editor. I need graphics people. I need to know how to get this book published because self-publishing is easy now. But people have to realize at this moment, libraries don't buy from Amazon. But if you go to Ingram Spark, they'll buy your book. And they've bought my our books, our children's books have been bought even internationally, you know, and it's like, wow, you can see it in the system. They bought our book. So. You could also, if you can't write, you can transcribe your book Mm -hmm. and you can just talk it. The the person will, you know, listen to it, write it out. Then after she writes it out or he writes it out, then you have an editor. Make sure they don't have any mistakes. And we have clients who put those books out just like that. So if someone wants to get in touch with Kellen, someone wants Kellen to help them um, trans transverse the metaverse or or build their uh, following. How how can they get in touch? They can go to CPR firm f i r m dot com. That's the shorthand website. Our Coleman PR firm dot com. And I'm so bold. I don't know if guests do this, but they can call nine two five three six seven five, four, seven, eight, and just reach out. You will get an automatic text thing because sometimes the phone goes and it's going directly to me and it will say how you can schedule time if I don't pick up. But if I'm available, I pick up. Okay. Well, (laughs) I can talk for another hour with you because this is, this is where we are right now. Mm -hmm. The future is here and uh, great information. So please tune in. And listen to uh, Mr. Coleman. He's got some great information. Definitely reach out to him. And uh, I know most of you are on IG. A lot of you are on TikTok. This guy, he has the information for you. So if you want to learn more about the chamber, 
you can go to www.m-dcc.org or you can call the chamber at 305-751-8648. And the number to get in touch with you again, Kel? 925-367-5478. KC at CPRfirm.com. If they need to, you know, email me, Very, just, just holler. Just okay. holler. Well, this has been the Chamber Connection. Thank you for joining us.